Hello and welcome to Jazz Guitar Chord Melody, Part 17. Hi, this is Mike Hayes and just a quick reminder before we get started. If this is the first video you've seen in this series, there's a link in the description below to all the previous Jazz Guitar Chord Melody videos. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you'll be notified just as soon as the latest video is available. In this session, we're going to finish off our arrangement of Deck the Hall and also look at other ways that we can create interest in future arrangements. OK, let's jump right in. So we're starting on bar 13. That's the last four bars of the melody. Let's have a listen to the melody in bars 13 and 14. And of course, this melody is familiar to us because it has already occurred in the first two A sections. And as we've said previously, the melody here is a scale wise melody, so we'll use our major sixth diminish approach here. So the first note, D, we'll use a G sixth. For the C, we'll use C diminished. The next note, B, we'll use G sixth. And the next note is A, so we'll use an A diminish there. On to the next bar, the first note's G, so we'll use G6 there. The next note A, we'll use A diminished. On to the note B, so we'll use G6. And the last note G, we'll use G6 again. Let's have a listen to those two bars. Now in the last two bars there's a change in the melody. Let's have a listen to the melody for the last two bars of Deck the Hall. So essentially once again we have a melody that moves in a scale wise fashion. So we might use our G6 diminished scale. The only thing I'd probably do here is because the first four notes are all the same, I might create some movement by playing a C major 7th under the first two notes and then a C 6th under the third and fourth E's. Under the next note, the D, I'll play a G 6th and then for the last note, the C, I'll play a C diminished. On to the last bar, we have the note B, so I'll play G 6th, the note A, I'll play an A diminished, and then for the last note, the note G, I'll use a G6-9 chord. Let's have a listen to how that would sound. Of course, one of the benefits of working on arrangements in the same key, you can start to see options. For example, we could play the last two bars uh, using passing chords. So we could play C major 7th and C 6th under the E notes like we did in the previous example. But instead of playing G 6th under the D note, we could play a B minor 7. Under the C note, we could play A minor 7 into the next bar. Under the note B, we could play G major 7. Under the A note, we could play F sharp half diminished. And then we could finish off again with our G6-9 chord. Now, I got these chords from our passing chord concept that we used in Ode to Joy and also earlier in this arrangement of Deck the Hall. Let's have a listen to how that would sound using these passing chord style arrangements. So the more you study songs, particularly the tunes that you're familiar with, the more opportunities you'll see where you can use these techniques that we've been learning. Let's have a listen to the last four bars using the G6 diminished scale approach. Mm -hmm. 
OK, I'm going to play the whole arrangement now, the entire 16 bars. We've been piecing together this arrangement over several sessions. So now would be a good time to just have a listen to where we're up to with this arrangement. Here we go with the complete arrangement as we have it up to this point. OK, the way I've been approaching this arrangement for Deck the Hall is for a rubato style performance. That means to play the tune freely. We're not sticking to a really rigid tempo. And this is great for expression. You can put a lot of emotion and that into your arrangement. So one of the things I like to do now is talk about stylizing a song a completely different way. Uh, what I'm going to do here is play, say, a swing version, uh, more like a big band with a bit of a blues feel to it. The same tune, slightly changing some of the chords, and this is where we stylize the tune. The two new musical resources that I'd like to draw your attention to at the moment is the use of different rhythms. For example, you could play a song that might normally be played in 4-4, four, four, you might decide to play it in 3-4. Uh, in this instance, I'm just changing the underlying feel. I'm thinking of the drummer playing like a swing beat, and that's giving me a different feel uh, in my interpretation of where the notes and the chords would fall uh, in this tune. The other musical device that I'd like to draw your attention to that I'm using in this arrangement is the use of dynamics. That's loud and soft, light and shade. And this is a great way to maintain the listener's interest and it draws them into your story that you're telling. So here is a swing style arrangement of Deck the Hall. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have heard anything like this before. So there you go, the same song, just stylized differently. And if you've been following the series up to this point, you've probably been wondering why the heck are we doing tunes like Deck the Hall and Ode to Joy? They're not jazz tunes. But the thing is, you could stylize any tune to make it jazzy. One of the main things I want to work on at this stage is developing your imagination. If we just went to the real book and started working on autumn leaves and satin doll, 
fantastic tunes, and we will get to them. But the important thing we're trying to do at this stage is develop your own style. And you don't develop your own style by going down the same path as everybody else. So when I'm coming up with an arrangement, say of this tune, Deck the Hall, I mostly thought about it away from the guitar. And I imagined the type of arrangement I wanted to play. Now at the moment, we're only doing small little sketches. We're just playing through the tune once. So what I wanted to do there was get a concept of how I wanted to start the song, how I wanted to finish it, and the overall feel. So really the guitar is the last link in the process. And the more you work on studying, arranging, and applying it to your tunes, the more you can work on these things in your head. And then when you pick up the guitar, your fingers will know where you want them to go. Uh, just to finish this session off, there's been a number of guitar players that have influenced the way I've played this song. And I'll go into that in great detail in future sessions. Now, I don't mean that I've copied anything from these players to put into this arrangement, but I've been influenced by the sounds that I heard them play. And all these sounds go into a great big mulch heap, if you like, so that, and they just simmer away, these ideas simmer away in this musical mulch heap, and then when I'm wanting to make an arrangement, you sort of can pluck an idea out, and um, there you go. So the guitar players that have influenced this approach, or this way of thinking about arranging on guitar, would be George Barnes, Tony Matola, and Mundell Lowe. And I'd like to finish off this session with a quote from Mundell Lowe, because I think it's right on point for what we're talking about now. So here's that quote from Mundell Lowe. I choose chords and notes based on what I feel in my gut without worrying about convention. So there you go. I really hope you've got something out of this session. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to pop them in the comments section below the video. And of course, I look forward to catching up with you again next time. Bye for now.